you. It's uh, always rather difficult to speak when you are the last of the uh, of those uh, in a seminar. But uh, first of all, it's an honor for me from uh, such a small organization and such a young organization to speak here at the panel with such big giants in political foundations, you know, and all the political work and. Uh, and uh, so, so it is. Uh, so my presentation is going to be more of an introduction uh, to you of what uh, those uh, Eastern European political foundations are doing or have been doing since uh, all these giants moved from Lithuania and left us home alone, as I usually say. So, um, first of all, uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm not that important as, as you made me look like. Um, I'm just uh, uh, an assistant or chief of staff for the member of the European Parliament from Lithuania. And uh, as uh, Mr. Paul Spiller mentioned, uh, uh, I also wear two hats and probably even three hats once in a while. I change them uh, uh, as, uh, as often as I want to. <laughs> so, so now I'm, uh, I'm here representing the Open Society and its friends, a liberal foundation from Lithuania. And uh, as, my, uh, as my presentation goes, it's, I'm going to talk more about the work in progress of, uh, of the political foundations in my country. Uh, but first of all, uh, being from Lithuania, I very often, and I think most Lithuanians very often get a question, what? Lithuania? Is that Ukraine? Is that Sweden? As in this example, I actually just googled where is Lithuania and I got this one. So <laughs> you may get questions, you know, as funny as that. But just to, just to make amends, I'll, I'll show you where Lithuania is. It's about 2,600 kilometers from Barcelona, not that far away, only two and a half hours flight. So Lithuania, we believe, is in the center of Europe. I'll tell you later that Lithuania is a very proud country, and I'll try to do a trick now. Nope. <laughs> mm, I think it will not work. If you can help me. <laughs> um, yep, okay, thank you. And we uh -huh. press play. Oops, 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 oops. <laughs> Okay, so it's a, just a background while I speak a bit about Lithuania. As I said, Lithuanians are very proud people. We're a very tiny country, but we always like to say that we are the largest of the three Baltic states. And uh, we are a very tiny country in today's world, but we always like to brag that we have been the largest European state in the 14th century. And uh, we are not that good in basketball, or we haven't been so good in basketball this year, but we always like to say that basketball is our second religion, or I would even say first religion when it comes to attending the mass or the basketball game, you know. So I think every person in Lithuania has been to a basketball game, but not everybody has been to church. So, so here you go. Uh, there are only three million people in Lithuania, not that much as compared to other countries. And uh, we are a very homogenous country. About 80% of us are pure blood Lithuanians. That might, might sound scary, but uh, we don't have immigrants as such, but uh, most of the non-Lithuanians are either Polish, our neighbors, or Russians, also our neighbors, or Belarusians, also our neighbors. And, uh, and uh, as to you saw on the map, so Lithuania uh, borders with uh, Latvia, Belarus, uh, Poland, a bit of, uh, of uh, Russia, and the Baltic Sea. So it's about us. You, you, you had a glimpse of, of how Lithuania looks just a little bit. And uh, to move on to political foundations, I should also introduce a bit of a, uh, a political situation. Uh, we are a democracy. We've, we are in the European Union and in NATO. We actually were 
again bragging, you know, the first country to actually get independence from the Soviet Union and a year before the Soviet Union collapsed. So we sometimes like to say that, you know, we start the collapse of the European Union. And now we have a presidential, a mixed presidential and parliamentary government or, 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 or system, political system. Three top political leaders are women even though women are not very, you cannot meet very many women in politics, but the president, the speaker of the parliament, and the finance minister are all women. Um, we have a, okay, now let's change back to the presentation. Yay, good, good. Um, we have a parliament of 141 seats, and, um, 70 of them are elected in a proportional system and the rest 71 are elected in single constituency system. So it's a mixed system which makes uh, all of our political uh, system rather complicated. Um, we have about 50 registered political parties. If you'd ask even the prime minister of the country to list all of them, he would not be able to do that. Usually about 15 to 20 run in elections, or actually have the lists in elections. Only from seven to eight make them into the parliament. At the moment, uh, the largest political party in the government is the Homeland Union, that's conservatives, which are members of the EPP political family in Europe. Uh, then the uh, their partners in the government, there are, we have two liberal political parties, the Liberal and Centre Union and the Liberal Movement. I'm actually a member of the Liberal Movement and the Foundation Open Society and its friends is, let's say, not really affiliated but very closely related to the Liberal Movement. And, uh, and the Social Democrats is uh, another largest party in Lithuania supposedly the one to take over the government in the next year's elections. And uh, I should also mention that Lithuania is one of those countries which totally changes their opinions within each elections. Mm -hmm. So we, we never have a, a government stay for a long, you know, for longer time than one term. It's either or. So it all has to do with the lack of trust in society, I would say, and uh, uh, rather weak democratic institutions as well. And uh, this lack of trust and weak democratic institutions also explains why in Lithuania we have uh, new political parties being born before each elections. And those political parties are usually not ideological at all and they are very much populist. And uh, as you see uh, the mixed group here, or the Christian party, so that's how they call themselves. But when they ran for elections, they, were, they, they called themselves the Resurrection Party. And their program was a mock Ten Commandments. So here you go, and they get 18 seats in the parliament, and uh, they, they are actually in the government to, you know, our unfortunate fate. But, you know, it's a, as I said, a proportional system. We need coalition governments. We, we never have a majority to just form a government or on our, on our own. Uh, talking about these political parties, um, uh, I, I should also start mentioning uh, that uh, not all of them have political foundations. And political foundations are usually not, um, let's say like this, uh, political foundations have only b uh, are only being born now, uh, much later than the political parties in the country. And that explains why not all of the organizations have political foundations. Most of the organizations consider youth organizations to be political foundations. And youth organizations are probably the strongest parties of each political party. And each political party tries to have a youth organization. Unfortunately, because of the history of mergers and acquisitions, as we see, in a liberal 
world in Lithuania, we have uh, two, three, sometimes four, sometimes two again liberal parties, but we only have one liberal youth organization, which um, most, uh, most often works uh, with different political parties depending on the city. And uh, then, uh, then of course, such uh, such organizations, such trade unions, usually see themselves in partnership with the social democrats and uh, and church as a big player in the country sees themselves in partnership with the homeland union. So it's a bit of an introduction. And. Um, why, why the situation is like that? Uh, y yesterday during dinner, I, I, I mentioned shortly a, my own theory about uh, uh, political foundations, or let's say the democracy in, in, in Lithuania being a teenager. I, I, I really enjoy psychology, and I, and I try to analyze a lot of what is going on in the world from a psychological point of view. So I believe what happened in Lithuania is that um, uh, you had a teenager of 14 years old in 2004, and that teenager woke up one morning, which was probably the 2nd of May, and he realized that he's all alone at home. All of the foundations that worked with, the, with political parties, with all of the NGOs in the country have just left. And it's silent, and there's nothing around, and they're left on their own. Well, you know, if you're left on, the, on your own and you're a teenager, you, you kind of tend to misbehave or to, you know, experiment and to say, yay, freedom, you know, I don't have to account to anybody anymore, you know, I can do whatever I want. The good thing was that most of the political leaders and even in today's government have been educated and have been trained and prepared by, I would say, each of your organizations present here today. And, uh, and uh, depending more on a political party on, or on a certain politician. Me personally, I have to thank the Friedrich Naumann Foundation uh, for, I would say, uh, uh, everything that I learned or most what I learned and for actually getting the inspiration for creating the Open Society and its Friends Foundation. And uh, it happened actually in 2005 when, as I said, you know, we were home alone, but uh, there were still opportunities for, uh, not that many, but, but there were still, you know, some opportunities for, for, for us, the young leaders, to, to go and participate in seminars and in trainings. So I, in 2005 and six, I attended a few of those seminars that you mentioned uh, from the, uh, Leadership Institute, uh, the the online phase and uh, and the presence phase, and uh, having come back from those seminars, I I told my uh, my colleagues and my boss at the at the moment that we definitely need to move on and we definitely need to create a foundation and we need to start moving and 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 do these things that Friedrich Naumann does. So we we like to joke that we're a little tiny copy of Friedrich Naumann Foundation, and then when they ask us, you know what do you want to be when you grow up we say you know we want to be Friedrich Naumann you know so <laughs> it's a it's a nice story of how we're related to our um, our German uh, uh, fathers I would say uh, but uh, getting back to the civil society in Lithuania um, we do not have a very good situation. Of course, we're doing much better than the rest of the former Soviet Union states or the Arab world or the developing world. And, and, and I, I shouldn't even compare us to, to these parts of the world. I mean, we are a democratic country. We, we have elections. Uh, you know, we have uh, changing governments. There is a rule of law. There is a free market economy. There are, you know, we have our own problems. But the biggest problem is the total lack of trust. And I've taken these three words, three sentences that say, I do not trust you. I do not even trust myself. So I do not trust the civil society. And this is actually the conclusions from one of the latest uh, studies uh, that uh, carried on a, a poll on uh, how uh, Lithuanian citizens perceive NGOs, their own participa participation in them, their role in the society, and so so what we managed to find out, or what these um, 
uh, these uh, uh, people who analyzed it managed to find out was that, you know, the biggest problem actually lies within ourselves. And uh, I think Martin said that uh, in uh, sometimes in the countries that you work, you know, the daily life is more important than the political rights. And I think this is, uh, this is part, partly why the situation is like it, like, like it is, you know. People want to, first of all, take care of their stomachs, you know, feed themselves and feed their families. Then they want, you know, a good roof under their, you know, head and then probably a car, a cell phone and so on and so on. And only then they care about the political rights. And when uh, we liberals jump in with political rights and and uh, and even uh, and uh, even if we touch you know like civil liberties you know homosexuals uh, uh, drugs prostitution everybody goes oh no oh no don't even mention that you know I mean we're not even there you know don't start talking about these things you know first of all I need to eat and this especially happens in uh, with the economic downturn like today uh, people uh, people close to themselves and they don't want to participate, they don't want to go out and do something. Um, there was, a, a, as I mentioned, this poll and they asked the question, what is an NGO, a non-governmental organization? And we got very sad answers. And uh, about 53% said that I have no idea what an NGO is. And then uh, People, about 13% said, well, it's not related to the government. And then, uh, and then some try to guess that it's a non-profit organization, meaning that it cannot have a profit. And, or it's run by, it's a charity which gives money and it's run by volunteers. And it can always be explained, especially the charity. If you ask a Lithuanian, if you know an NGO, or if you've taken part in an NGO, if you've given money to an NGO, first idea that would come to a Lithuanian's mind would be that Caritas. It's a Christian church-based organization helping the homeless, the elderly, the, the uh, disabled. And uh, I'm not sure why, but almost every other person would say it's Caritas. You know, so it's charity, it's giving money. Uh, only one or two percent would actually think of a political party or a political foundation as an NGO. Um, it also has to do with the uh, total untrust in political institutions and political uh, political parties. Uh, there are monthly polls carried out in, in, in Lithuania. They ask, you know, if you trust the political parties or you do not trust them. So it's about 90% of untrust in the government, in the parliament, in the political parties and politicians as such. We trust the fire brigades. We trust the church. We used to trust the banks until the last week's uh, uh, nationalization of one of the banks. So, so probably ne ne next Next month, the results might be different. So, as I mentioned a bit, it's uh, most of the most of the people believe that NGOs are charities, and that's it. And uh, and then uh, and then many people believe that uh, NGOs are a work and do all the work just for themselves. So it's not there to help the general public. It's you know, if you are a member of an NGO, uh, then you help yourself. And um, uh, about 40% say that the NGOs provide certain services, and it also has to do with charity-based NGOs. That you know, they think that you know, Caritas provides services, so they think about it. And uh, about 25% that they say that they these organizations they lobby for their own interests. So rather, you know, not trustworthy. You know, they're they're just doing things for themselves. And uh, about 40% would never mention a name or could not mention a name of a non-governmental organization. And Caritas, as you say, get, get, as you see, gets 16%. Lithuania has one of the least uh, participation uh, levels in the civil society as such. I think 22 is like the biggest percentage I found. Usually we say from 15 to, to 18. Uh, but... Uh, but the interesting or strange part is, and it has to do with our legal system as well, 
that uh, most people, when they say that they are active in NGOs, they, they actually mean that they are members of some sports organizations of clubs because they go under the same legal entity as an NGO. And here you go. About 45% say that they are not interested in participating and 13% even see no points or purpose in, in, in participating in any of the NGOs. And, uh, oh, and the interesting part is that they are rather optimistic in uh, their own uh, financial input into the, the civil society. About 40% say that I would rather take the like, non-active stand and I would, for example, donate to the organization, but don't ask me to get involved. And, uh, and I, can, I can mention now the, the situation of how our organizations are financed. Um, none of the, none of the organizations of uh, the former leader, the current leader, and uh, the most famous uh, liberal academic in, uh, in the country. And then we usually joke within ourselves and then two, two women to run the, the organization. But in general, we do not have permanent staff. It's run by the founders. It's run on a pro bono uh, basis. And uh, uh, we are funded by private donors mostly. And, uh, and then we do get funding from uh, the European Parliament, the ALDE Group, or ELF. We are members of the ELF organization since 2009. And, uh, but uh, we're, we're not affiliated, as I said, to a liberal movement party. But as, uh, as five of us are from this party, we, we do try to help and to, and to carry most of our wor work uh, for the political party. What, what do your activities include? Is we've started out as a little donor organization. I mean, when we talk about funding, we talk about 500 euros, about 300 euros, and that's usually enough for a project in Lithuania. We're not talking about, you know, in, in, in hundred thousand, so in millions, as, as you know, the, the, the rest of you usually do. So, you know, so it's, uh, we tried uh, to fund the third party projects, and our biggest uh, receipt was the Liberal Youth Organization, and which we saw as our main partner, especially when after yet another kind of uh, separation of the liberal political parties. And then uh, uh, various women's organizations or elderly people organizations, various youth organizations. Basically what we tried to do was to raise voters by helping them carry out their own projects, which are in the same aims and goals as we have. Then because one of our founders was an academic, we got in very good contacts with the academic world, with the universities and uh, with publishing houses. So usually during, uh, during a, a year we would publish one or two books and uh, the, the most famous ones is that we, we took part in publishing two, uh, uh, two books uh, which are on Lithuanian liberalism actually. The, the next one is, is, uh, is going out next year. And then also in our, in our cooperation with the universities, we have uh, bachelor and master thesis scholarships. So we ask students to analyze uh, uh, and, and write the thesis on certain topics as decentralization, liberal democracy, you know, political parties, and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, market economy, and, um, and so on. And, uh, and we give... Uh, just a little bit of money. The scholarships, as I said, you know, they're, they're not big. They're 300 euros per year, but for a Lithuanian student, that's a lot. Then we hold annual conferences, and uh, also, uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, we are still learning, you know, and, uh, and learning for us is very important. And uh, last year, I've, I've uh, participated uh, in the Lib Dems conference in Liverpool, and uh, so we decided to to organize annual conferences in cooperation with the with the political party so that to make uh, a party congress more attractive so 
so this uh, learning still 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 exists and the annual conferences we do lots of conferences with or seminars we do seminars with universities students uh, uh, from anything from just plain liberalism to human rights uh, to you know how the European Parliament works, the Parliament works. It's all about education that we do. We need, uh, as uh, as Alba, you you mentioned that you know, uh, for a working democracy, we need informed citizens who understand how a liberal democracy works. So this is basically what we do. Our, all our projects uh, involve educating people, and then of course the online seminars are. Our own e academy, uh, as I said, a little copy of uh, of the of the leadership institute of what the Friedrich Naumann does, and it's been actually the biggest project of of our organization that runs for three years in a row. We usually have five to six online seminars per year. They attract a lot of attention, and we use it as a field to actually get voters or the general public into communication with the political party and with the political leaders as well. Because uh, political party members participate in those seminars just as uh, just as participants, you know, just as any other Lithuania that could do that. Our work uh, is carried out 90% in Lithuania. We have tried with the foreign ministry to do some uh, some activities abroad in Moldova, in Ukraine, in Belarus, but because of, as I mentioned, of competing funds and competing for for money from the government, uh, we've stopped doing that because it's a bit too difficult. And as I mentioned, we're a very tiny organization, run on a volunteer basis. So so now we we only we only uh, try to work in Lithuania. But just to finish up, I'll. I would like to address those three points to, to as I said, you know, the, the big giants or the, the, the real experts in political foundations, that Lithuanian organizations or the Eastern European organizations could be your almost local partners for projects carried out in former Soviet Union countries. So, so it's always good to remember. And uh, working with Lithuanian organizations, you benefit from the point of view which is not yet Western but not Eastern anymore, so we're like in between, you know, can understand two poles of the world. And, uh, and uh, just to finish, you not only help the developing countries, you know, doing those projects, but you also lead, uh, you can lead a teenager to becoming an adult. So I hope that, uh, that together with you, we can still become, you know, trustworthy and proper adults. So, yeah. <laughs>